Hello, my name is Jan Blaha and this is a screencast called Deep Dive into Jazz Report. In this screencast, I'm going to start with installation of Jazz Report server and quickly repeat the basics of the platform. Then I will jump into the more advanced features like report scheduling, user management, localization and others. So let's start. Jazz Report is an open source reporting server based on JavaScript and templating engines. Jazz Report takes slightly different approach than the other solutions. Designing reports in Jazz Report is all about the code and standard technologies like JavaScript. You won't get stuck with proprietary formats or designers. This gives you the full power and also allows you to use technology stack you already know. Jazz Report can be installed to your own on-premise windows or Linux servers or you can use it right away through the cloud offering jazzreportonline.net. There is even a limited playground or filling tool you can try without any registration. So let's install JS Report to my on-premise machine. You can find installation instructions for each platform on the website. Now I will follow the manual instructions for Windows. JS Report runs on Node.js, so you need to install it first. I already have it installed, so I just Skip this step and go to the next one. Open a command line and type npm install jazz report. This will download and install jazz report from the node package manager. Next step is to initialize jazz report application. And start. This should start a JS report server on a default port, which is 443. Now I can open a browser and connect to the JS report studio. You see, it has already pre created for me a sample report that I can run and see the output in the preview pane. The output of this report is a PDF. This is because the recipe for this particular template is set to phantom PDF. The recipe in JS report is an algorithm which is cooking together the final report output. Phantom PDF recipe is using HTML to PDF conversion based on phantom JS technology. If I switch to HTML and run it again, I see that the different recipe is different, rendering different output and for this case it's HTML. Here in the content tab, you see that the HTML is dynamically assembled using templating engines. For this particular template, it's a handlebars engine. If you don't like handlebars, you can try the different engine that is provided in your installation. In the helpers tab, I see a custom function, which can be then used in the, in the content to calculate some dynamic data. The sample report data, which are used in the design time, are taken here from the data tab. Respectively, you can go there from the data menu to sample data and see a JSON, which is then used during the design time to assemble the design time report. I can, for example, change this value, save it, go back and run the report again. And I see that the value was reflected Okay, now I will show you a full workflow how you can create the template, prepare the design data, test the template and then use the API to render the template remotely. Now I will create a new template. You can do this from actions, create template, put the template a name and some content. I run it, I see it's producing PDF. Now I will bind some dynamic data into the template. To bind the data, I will use templating engine handlebars and bind a title property from the input data. If I run it again, I see that nothing has changed. This is because I haven't associated the sample data for this template yet. To do it, I will save the template, go to actions and create a new sample data. Data I will show a JSON that will be then propagated into the template during the rendering. Save it, go back to the template, 
associate the data that I've just created and run the template again. I see that the template is correctly binding the input data into the output. Now I will show you how you can use the API to remotely render this template. This is what you will do from your application or system you have. The best way to actually get the information about the API call you should make is to click the API toolbar button here, where you get the information, what is the URL, what method you should use, what you should put into the content type, and what is the identification of the template. To make the call live, I will use the Chrome Advanced REST client. You see, I've already put the right URL there. I've put there the right content type. I will put there just the right identification of the template and send the request. The output is PDF. The PDF is not very readable here in the REST client, so I will override the values on the template that are stored with the API values. I will override the recipe to HTML, send the request again, and get back the report. I see that I forgot to save the template because here should be the binded data. So I go back, save the template, send the request again, and yes, there's a correctly binded data. Now I want to actually send my data, real data, in the request. To do it, I will add data property to the request where I can put the data that will be stored somewhere in my database but right now I will just put there some string send the request again and I see that the data are correctly binded from the values that I provided in the request okay so this was the easy part of the JS report now I will switch to the real deep dive and show you some more advanced features. Recipes. What is a JS report recipe? It's an algorithm which is cooking together the final report output. JS report ships out of the box with several default recipes for rendering PDF or Excel. But also there are new recipes coming up from the community. So right now you can also additionally install recipe for converting HTML into text or use BKHTML to PDF utility inside JS report. Now I will go through the provider recipes and show them in the action. HTML recipe. This one is very simple and very straightforward. It just adds the right media type into the output stream so you display it correctly in the page. Another recipe, Phantom PDF. This one is probably the most popular one. It's using PhantomJS headless browser to transform HTML into PDF. So if I run it, I get back the PDF. You see that Phantom PDF recipe adds some additional options you can put to the page, like change the page size, or change the page orientation. or add a header. You can also add to the header page numbers. This is done by special text. If I add it to the header, I see that I get the page number slash total number of pages. I can add more pages into the page so it's more visible to you. I have three pages right now. Know that PhantomJS is evaluating all the JavaScript that you put into the content or also into the headers and footers. So I can, for example, write a JavaScript function which will skip the first page with the paging and start from the second one. Such a function can look like this. It finds the page number that is in the header and if the value is less than equal, let's say one, it will hide it. So with this function, it should hide the page paging on the first page and start with the second one. So if I add it to the header, run it again, I have nothing on the first page and I start on the second page. Very common problem with PhantomJS is that by default, it's not displaying a local languages so if I add some and run it 
I see it completely messed up. To fix this, you just need to add the correct hard set to the page. So I will just replace the whole page. You see that I have a right meta tag containing the right UTF-8 hard set, and if I run it again, I get the correct values. Another recipe for using PDF is called FOP PDF. This one is using Apache formatted object processor to create PDF from XML. To actually run this recipe, you need to install Apache FOP executable and add it to your path on your computer. I already have it, so I just need to write a very verbose XML and run it to see that it's actually producing PDF. This is kind of an old school way of creating PDF files, which is very verbose, phantom, JS based conversion from HTML is more productive. But on the other hand, using FOP, you can still reach more precise results that you want. Know that it's still you have the same methodology for creating templates as in whole JS report, you can use helpers, you, you have input data, you can use templating engines to create the XML. You are only just creating XML instead of HTML. Everything else is the same. Another recipe is called text. This can be handy if you want to just generate a simple CSV file. So in the content, I will just put the numbers with the enter, which is actually a valid CSV. Only thing that I need to add is here in the new text menu, the right content type for a CSV and the right file extension. If I run it, I get back the CSV. The text recipe can be also used if you just want to generate some kind of appropriate XML. Only thing that you need to add then is the right content type, and that's it. Another recipe, HTML to XSLX. This one is able to convert HTML table into the Excel. You see it's already nicely displayed in the studio. Know that if you add multiple tables, it will be just one. So this one is just very simple one. The second recipe producing Excel is called XSLX. This one is using Office XML to produce the Excel. It's again displayed in the studio. It's looking very verbose, but it's the same format that you will find if you actually rename the Excel file to zip file, extract it, and this is what you will find inside. So you get a full power to produce the right Excel, but again, it can be a little slower to learn the format and to also get used to it. The next recipe is called wrapped HTML. This recipe wraps your HTML into a container and adds to your page a JavaScript object which you can use to call various JS report functions. To show you this, I will switch to the original template, the sample report. You see, if I switch to wrapped HTML, it ends up just a plain HTML. But what I can do, I can, for example, add a button. And if the user clicks on this button, I can handle it. And use JS report object to print this HTML into PDF. For this, I will call a render function. Specify content of the template, which will be the full page. And also specify the recipe. Try the template. Click print and see it has printed for me a PDF. So this function, JS report render, calls actually the server with the dynamically assembled template and output the PDF because the recipe is phantom PDF. I can, for example, just render a part of the page if I want. So let's mark 
this table with some ID. And instead of using whole HTML the page, I can just search for a table. And use the HTML of the table. For a full page, it can be convenient to hide this print button in the output PDF. For this, I can just write a print style which will hide this button. Try it and see it's not visible on the printed page. The JS report JavaScript uh, object also gives you ability to open an embedded editor directly in the page and let the user to edit the template. For this, there is a function called open editor, to which I can provide the template itself, which is stored in the JS report template. Handle the close event. and refresh the page with the edited values. Try again. See it's opening for me an editor, which user can use. Change, for example, the header. Close the page and it will get reflected. You are not limited to recipes which ships out of the box with the JS report installation. You can also write your own recipe or you can use the recipe provided by the community. To show you this, I open the command line where I have a JS report server running and stop it for a moment. Now I can install a new recipe. Recipes are typically distributed through npm and I can install it the same, using the same command as when I was installing JS report server. So type npm install and then the name of the recipe. Now I have the new recipe installed, so I can start the server again. You see in the log that the HTML to text was applied, so I can refresh the studio and see that the recipe is in the list. This recipe is useful when you are sending emails in HTML and you are rendering HTML through JS report template. But sometimes you want to send just the text. So how to do it? Use HTML to text, which will convert my already existing HTML template into this nicely structured text. So I put here just some complicated HTML, which can be an email. And if I switch to HTML to text recipe and render again, I get nicely structured text. JS report ships out of the box with several handy features. One of them allows you to upload an image into the JS report and then reference it in the template. I have here an empty report template and I want to add an image into the PDF. If the image is publicly access accessible, it's very easy. I just put there an image with the full URL, I can render the template and I get the image inside the PDF. If the image is not publicly accessible or I don't want to download it over and over again, I can upload the image into the JS report. To do it, I go to images, click upload, find the image that I want to upload, and JS report will upload it and store it inside. Now I can click this handy toolbar enter into template to get the code to use if I want to embed it into the template. Go back to images template, put the code there, and I see that the image is there. Note that the image name can be dynamically constructed using templating engines. So I can, for example, put the image name into the input data and then dynamically assemble 
the image name based on some conditions. So let's say I have in the input data the name of the image and I want to render it. First I need to provide some sample data for this report, so I click the new data. And put their image name, which was desert, I think. Save it, go back to the template, associate the sample data, render again, and I get the correct image. Another handy feature allows you to split a report template into the smaller reusable sub-templates, or as we call them, child templates. This can be useful if you have a huge template that is hard to orient in, or you want to separate your styles and script into a separate template, or you have a modularized report template and you want to dynamically assemble it based on the input data. To show you child templates in action, I have here the default sample report. And let's say we want to take this table out from the template and put it somewhere else that it can be raised on other places. So let's take this table out, create a new template, and also set the recipe to HTML. If I run it, I get the empty table because I have no input data right now. But if I go back to the sample report and reference the table using special tag, child, I get the table to the report. Know that you can also use child templates inside Phantom header and footer. So if I go to header, put their child table, increase the height of the header, and run it again. I get the child template rendered inside a PDF header. Also note that the child template name here can be dynamically assembled using templating engines. So if I call a helper function like get template name, create this helper function, I still get the table rendered correctly. Another feature lets you to store report output bits inside JS report and reference them from your application for later use. To demonstrate this, I have here again a sample report. I open the Chrome REST client and add to the request body options reports specifying that I should save the output of the report and send the request. This gives me the pack the PDF but additionally I get the permanent link HTTP header in the response that is giving me the link to the stored report. So if I click on it it opens for me the rendered report. If I go back to JS Report Studio I can navigate to reports and see that the report is there stored permanently for me. Another feature lets you to attach a custom JavaScript function to the template, which will run before or after the rendering process. This opens many scenarios where it can be used, like if you want to load the report data using a REST call, or you want to send the report output using email. To show you the scripts in action, I have here an empty template. To this template, I'll attach a new script. Go to actions and create script. Give the script a name. And now I will define the global function called before render. The name of the function is important because it specifies when the function should run in the JS report server. Function has a one parameter. And this parameter is a function that you should call when you are done with the processing the script. This is because the script can run in an asynchronous way. Inside the script, I have access to some global variables that JS report provides to me. One of them is called request that represents the currently rendering requests. 
request as a template property, which is a currently rendering render template. And on the template, of course, I can, for example, override the content. All done. Save it. Go to templates and associate the new script with the template. Run it. And I see the override value. Now I'll show you how we can make an HTTP request to load some data from my remote server. For this purpose, I will use this public REST feed. Create a script in the new window. And here I will call Node.js require to load a request module that is used to make HTTP requests. I will put the URL as a parameter, also say that it should parse output as a JSON and add a callback. Now I can try to log what I have actually received from the remote server. Save it, run the script, and you, I, you see I get the error that the console is not defined. This is because the script is running in a sandbox environment and not everything is provided into it. But if you want to actually see what has been returned from the server, you can work around this and write the value, for example, into the template content. In this way, you can get more information what's happening in the script. I go back to script and put the body into the input request data. Save it. And in the template, I will switch to JS render and iterate over this data and print something from it like a title. Run it again. And now we see it's working correctly. So inside the script, I've loaded the data from the remote server and iterated over them using templating engines and printed the PDF. Know that the script doesn't need to run only before the rendering process, but also it can run after rendering process. This can be useful if you want to do some post-processing, like send the email with the report to someone. I will show you this quickly just in the snippet. So you need to define an after render function, specifying that it will run actually after the rendering process. Here I can require, for example, a send grid that is a mail provider. Say that I want to send it to someone and I want to put into the email an attachment that should contain the PDF buffer with the report that I have just rendered. JS report ships out of the box also with scheduling. This lets you to plan the background jobs that will run periodically and run the report templates. This can be, for example, used together with scripts and you can send periodically the emails with reports. Now I will quickly show you the scheduling in action. For this purpose, I have here the default sample report. I will go to scheduling and create a new one. Give it a name. And here I should set the cron expression specifying when the job should run. Cron is a very strong format you can even say that you want to run a job every second working day in a month and so. But right now I will just say that I want to run the job every minute. Set the correct template. I'll just check the time so we don't need to wait so much. And now if I refresh the page, I see that the job has run correctly 
and I can also download the output. You can also find the output of the scheduled job here in the reports. And then you can use, for example, in the template a script that will send the report with an email. Localization. If you need to support multiple languages in your report templates, you have several options. You can provide the localized resources directly in the API calls, or you can create a dedicated template for each language, or you can use a feature JazzRepo provides out of the box for localization. Now I will show you localization in JazzReport Studio. I have again a default report template, and what I will do, I will create two resources for German and English and bind these resources to the template. So let's first create two resources. The resources are just common data items that you use for design time data. I will prefix the eight items with the language. So this one will be English. And let's add the title there, the English and also create a German one. Save it, go back to template, attach these two resources to the template. And now I can use in templating engines a dedicated variable provided by JS report for localized resource. And if I set the language to in English, run it, I get correctly hello world. And if I set it to German, run it, I get it in German. This is because JS report binds into this localized resource the correct resource based on the language that you specified here. You can also see it in the API. I go to Chrome Advanced REST Client, just take the short ID. and add options to the body and set the language to English send the request I get back hello world if I set it to German I get it in German user management you can limit the access to JS report studio by adding a login page into it you can also create new users and delegate permissions to particular templates to them you can make the template publicly accessible with security token and you can also secure the API by providing basic authorization into it. To add a login page to JS Report Studio, I need to enable authentication first. To do it, open the folder where is your JS Report installed, find the configuration file and add to the configuration file the authentication section. Restart the JS report server. And refresh the studio. You see that it's asking me for credentials. So I can log in with the admin. And now I can also create new users. So let's create one. Log out and log in with a new user. You see that the new user cannot reach the other templates that are not yet delegated to him, but he can create a new template and play with it as he wants. I will now log out and log in back to administrator. Select the template that I want to delegate permissions to, to the new user, click the permissions Select the new user and say. Note that I also need to do the same thing also for other objects that are attached to the template, like data items, scripts, resources, images, or child templates. For this template, I just need to do it for data item. And now I can log out and log in back as a test user. See that the template is there and I can render it as I want. For API, you need to just include the authorization header in the every request that you make. 
The authorization is just basic, which means that in this hash, you need to put a base64 encoded username with a password. You can also export a template and make it public by clicking this share button and generate a real link. This will create for you a link, which will be then accessible even if you are not logged in. Jet report also includes a client application which can be used to browse the reports and the templates. The application is dedicated to the report consumers rather than the developers. It nicely fits to the phones and tablets and it's kind of application that the manager can open in the morning and check the daily report if everything is okay. Users can also set the preference if they want to open directly this client application or rather a full Jet report studio. The client application is customizable through standard report templates. To open a client application, go to the browser and just add a slash client to the URL after the Jet Report Studio. This will open a simple client application where user can browse the templates and as he clicks on the template, it gets automatically rendered. Doesn't matter if it's PDF or HTML. User can also switch that he doesn't want to render the template directly, he rather wants to browse the stored reports. And now, as he clicks on the template, he gets the list of the stored reports. Now let's change this default list in the client application and make a customized portal for a user. Go to Jazz Report Studio and create a new template. Let's add a link to the new customized portal to the particular template. I will just take the short ID of the template. And make the URL. Set the target of the link to parent because this template will be displayed in the iframe. Save it. Now I click this set default button, which makes this template a default one for a client application. This means when the user opens a client application, this template will be automatically rendered as default. So let's set it, go back to client application, and if I open it, it automatically displays the template. This one is PDF, so I need to switch it to HTML to actually make it working. So refresh it. Now I get my customized portal in HTML. User can click on the particular template and it gets rendered for him. What you can do, you can also use an OData here in the JavaScript in the template and load the list of templates and make the template list as you want. So I will just copy paste the snippet there that is doing it. So here I have an empty diff where I will generate the list of templates. I link a jQuery from CDN. I call get JSON function to the URL of data slash templates. I get back all the templates that are stored in JS report and the user has a permissions to it. And I dynamically construct the list of templates. So let's save it. Go back to client application. And you see that I get the list of templates. I can click on them and it will generate for me. This way I can customize the client application to my needs as I want. Now let's go back to Jazz Report Studio and create a new user. And on the user, I can set that this user is some kind of a manager that just wants to use the client application and he wants to get the client application by default rather than the full JS report studio. So I click set client application preference. Now I open another browser and log in the test user. Now you see this has open client application for me directly, so the user doesn't need to know that there is some kind of a JS report complicated studio behind and he can just work with the client application. 
Jazz Report is implemented with extensibility in mind since the very first start. Nearly everything in Jazz Report is a pluggable extension, including all the recipes, including templates, storing the data, scripts, images, everything. You can implement your own extensions or you can even install extensions provided by the community. Now I will show you how we can start with writing your custom extensions, but to completely describe what possibilities you have would we'll take a whole video. To write your own custom Jazz Report extension, navigate to the folder where is Jazz Report installed and create one for your new extension. And the folder prepare two files, main.js and jazzreportconfig.js. Jazzreportconfig.js is a main configuration file for extension. This file should export an object which needs to have a property name, which is the name of the extension, and also the path to the main entry point. In our case, it's main.js. Main.js file should export a function. which will be called during the initialization. The first parameter, called reporter here, is an instance of the object that is used as a facet to the whole JS report. You find many useful properties and methods you will use in the extension. Now I will just use the property before and the listeners. and add a function that will be called every time Jazz Report starts rendering a template. The first parameter of this function is an object representing the rendering request. On this object I can find a template and also I can find a helper's property. So let's add to this helper a function that will be then added to every template before the rendering starts. Save the file. Restart JS report server. Open JS Report Studio and create a new template. Now I should be able to use the helper function that I've added in the custom extension, even if it's not set it up here in the helpers. If I run it, you see that the string was correctly added, and in this way I have added the helper function to all the templates that I would have. Okay, you see that the writing custom extension is not a magic. The guest extension can also enrich the data model or UI, but this is not in the scope of this video. If you are interested in writing extensions, please check the website for tutorials, or also you can get an inspiration from the already existing extensions. You can find many of them in your installation and get inspiration from it. Thank you for your patience. You can reach me on mail or Twitter. I'm looking forward for your feature suggestions or a feedback.